Welcome to the EIS Data Mini Webinar. This is Trish Kelly, Data Manager for Federal Programs and Oversight at Tennessee Department of Education. Our work at the department is grounded in the Best for All Strategic Plan, which has three priorities, academics, student readiness, and educators. The agenda for this session on Education Information System, EIS, focuses on the aspects related to FPO's data, starting and ending enrollments in the school year, Extract 40 changes in values, cross-validation of Extracts 40 and 41, checking your data in your student information system and EIS, the EIS homepage, resources and login, and EIS research queries. We will also discuss reconciling the counts that federal programs and oversight and other teams provide you with the data that you're downloading from the EIS research queries. We will conclude with resources and contact information. Education Information System, EIS. EIS is the department's operational database. It is a primary source for federal reporting requirements, and it is updated, updated nightly with data transmitted from your student information systems and other databases that contain student, teacher, school, and district data. We will begin with suggestions for starting the school year. Um, at this point, I would like to alert you to changes affecting student classification begin dates. At the beginning of the school year or enrollment, for student classifications and other fields that are tied to enrollments, enter begin date as the enrollment date or the date that the status begins, if the status begins after the enrollment date. The change is that this language applies to all student classifications, including those associated with members of the economically disadvantaged subgroup, J Direct Search, FOSA One Foster Care, H Homeless, I Migrant, and U Runaway. For additional information, please refer to the economically disadvantaged section of the FPO data manual. It's also important at the beginning of the year to satisfy the average daily membership audit report. This is a requirement that students have at least one student classification. And you may do this in several ways. For example, you may uh, use the R regular student classification for students who do not have another student classification. Alternatively, you may use the R regular student classification for all students, or you may use another approach that meets your needs. In the next couple of slides, we'll discuss uh, student classification end dates. For if a student classification placement or status ends during the school year, enter the student classification end date as the date the status ends. For example, suppose Tom is a general education student who enrolls in the district in August. In October, Tom is placed in the Bedford County Juvenile Detention Center, which is identified by the JDC-01 student classification. His first day in the facility is October 12th, and his last day is October 18th. The JDC-01 student classification begin date is October 12th, the date the status begins. The JDC-01 student classification end date is October 18th, the date the status ends. For students who complete the school year, an end date can be used, for example, May 28th, 2024 for the 23-24 school year, or the end date may be left blank. The blank value indicates that the student completed the year. Check with your student information system vendor on which approach works best for your SIS package. It's important to note that student classifications in other fields identify students as part of subgroups for accountability, funding, reporting, and other purposes. As a result, please do not remove student classifications in other fields at the end of an enrollment or school year. Enter uh, the student classification end date or leave it blank depending on which approach is used in your package, but do not remove the student classification. Also, because the status applies for the year and is tied to enrollment, do not roll over student classifications in other fields 
to the next school year. The status has to be reconfirmed and entered that next school year. On the other hand, for fields that are a permanent part of the st student record, they may be rolled, rolled over to the next year, such as name, date of birth, date of language, and immigrant status. Extract uh, 40, changes in values. We're going to start with changes in birth country, immigrant, and year entered ninth grade. When districts change birth country, immigrant, and year entered ninth grade, EIS will generate an informational error message that contains the previous value and a request to confirm the new value. If the new value is correct, no further action is needed. If the new value is incorrect, please revise your data in your student information system and restage your data in EIS. Extract 40, changes in native language. Native language will not upload as blank or English if English language background was a value other than EE native speaker in 2017, 18 or later. Other changes in native language will generate informational error messages that include the previous value and a request to confirm the new value. Check your data and submit revisions if needed. Extract 40 changes in date first enrolled in U.S. school. Date, US, date first enrolled in U.S. school cannot be uploaded as blank if English language background was a value other than E in 2017-18 or later or the immigrant flag was yes in 2017-18 or later. Other changes to date first enrolled in U.S. school generate informational error messages like those we discussed just a moment ago. Uh, the message will include the previous value and a request to confirm the new value. Check your data and submit revisions if needed. Cross-validation of extracts 40 and 41. As we've just seen, the business rules for date first enrolled in U.S. school and native language on extract 40 are tied to those for English language background on extract 41. English language background is a required field on extracts 40 and 41 for 2017, 18 and subsequent years. English language background is set and edited on extract 41. English language background is included in extract 40 only for validation. Extracts that include blank or invalid English language background values generate fatal errors and are, will not load. Checking your data in your student information system in the IS, I have several suggestions for you. First, regularly review your district's data in your student information system and EIS. Take advantage of online and on-site opportunities to learn about your student information system and EIS. If your district permits you to have an access to EIS, request a login. If you're not able to obtain an EIS login, Collaborate with attendance, program, and technology colleagues with access. Use the EIS research queries to compare the data in EIS with the data in your student information system. Correct discrepancies in your student information system and upload revisions to EIS. Keep in mind that sometimes what you're going to notice that the discrepancies arise because the data have not fully processed in EIS. And so work with your EIS contacts to check uh, for three types of errors, lock approval errors, dynamic errors, and extract file errors. The EIS homepage has several resources that can help, that will be helpful to you. The login is available here on this slide. These resources include, include the EIS access form. You will download that and complete it and submit it to the district technology support team to obtain access. The EIS contact list includes not only the contacts for your district, but those uh, for other uh, districts around the state. It will be helpful, especially perhaps uh, for districts that use the same software package that you do. The EIS homepage also includes the data dictionary and appendices and extracts as well as contact information for the district technology support team. EIS login is a two-step process. Please use the 
Orion URL to access the please login screen, select here, and that will bring you to the next screen where you will enter the single sign on uh, email address and password for your account. From the uh, application icons page, select data reports. Select research queries. And um, from the list, from the list of research queries, select the one of interest to you. For federal programs and oversight data, use the English language learners research query, homeless student list, immigrant students, staff current assignments, student classifications, student withdrawals, and targeted assistance list. The student classifications research query contains many key fields, including active duty military dependent four, direct certification of economic disadvantage J, foster care false 01, juvenile detention centers JDC 01 through JDC 17, migrant I, National Guard military dependent five, reserve military dependent six, runaway U and title one T. For example, to check your foster care data, choose the student classifications research query. Select student classifications and foster care FALSA 1. Enter year is 2023 for the 23-24 school year. Select school or all schools. To run the query, select view report. Typically, you will wish to download to CSV or Excel format and to do so, use the file icon to the right of Find Next. The research query results include a record for each student and follow a standard format. School and student identifiers are on the left. The Foster Care FOSA 1 student classification is on the right. Reconciling FPO and other counts with EIS data. You have to keep in mind when you receive those counts from, e, from um, FPO that the data will have been um, cleaned. Whereas the data that you're downloading from EIS will include no-shows, duplicate records, multiple enrollments, and varying enrollment periods. As a result, to reconcile your data, what you will do is eliminate no-shows and duplicate records and address multiple enrollments. For example, to produce an unduplicated LEA level account, include one enrollment per student per LEA. To produce an unduplicated school level account, include one enrollment per student per school. Include only enrollments that are relevant for the count. For example, for an October 1 count, exclude students who withdrew before October 1 or enrolled after October 1. Finally, keep in mind that any revisions that were made in your student information system or EIS after the download date, date will not be reflected in the counts that FPO or the other teams pro provided you. For additional suggestions and how to uh, make these adjustments, please refer to the FPO data manual. We will conclude with resources and contact information. Uh, as mentioned a couple of times throughout the webinar, the uh, FPO data manual will be very helpful to you, and it can be accessed at the URL shown here. If you have questions about FPO data encoding, please contact me, Trish Kelly. For EIS errors and restaging problems, please contact the district technology support team. Both of our email addresses are shown here. Thank you very much for joining me in this session. I hope it was helpful to you. Please do contact me with questions.